Hi. Thanks for coming. So I've reserved the first five rows, but besides that, feel free to come closer. Um, I was kind of surprised when I got the auditorium, but you know, it's fun. Uh, so this is your first Drupal 8 and 9 module. Um, yeah, so I am Ted Bowman. I'm a principal software engineer at Acquia as part of the Drupal Acceleration team. Um, I'm Ted Bow on Twitter and Drupal.org. Um, we do a lot of stuff at the Drupal Acceleration team. Lately, I've been working on Drupal 9 preparation, um, just uh, update module stuff and just trying to make sure it all goes smoothly. Um, I worked on Layout Builder, but there's a bunch of other stuff that we do. Um, so how many people here have already started to make Drupal 8 modules? Okay. How many people made Drupal 7 modules? Oh, great. Sort of my audience. Um, how many people have an object-oriented programming background of some sort? All righty. Um, sort of pretend that I can see your hands. It's very bright lights, but that's fine. Um, no, I think I have a general idea. Um, so let's make a module. This is a lot to cover, so I'm going to go kind of quickly. I'll have a little time for questions at the end, but feel free to um, uh, catch me afterwards. Also, all the source code is available um, with tons of comments in the source code. Um, so the module we're going to make is called Role Notices. Um, and basically, I'm going to show you the module in eight different stages, from like a hello world to a finished module. Um, and on the project page, um, you can get the module in folders with each stage, or you can use git tags like I use up here to like go from like one to eight. Um, so the, what the module does is it allows um, user admins to set notices for each users. And then it's displayed in a block, and it's displayed uh, other ways. Um, it's always trouble when you're making a uh, teaching module to find something that hasn't been done already. Um, so example would be you have a message to your editors that says, check that spelling and admin, stop deleting people's accounts. Um, so we're going, this module is going to provide a permission. It's going to provide a settings form. It's going to provide a block. We're going to use a service. It's going to take into account caching. Uh, the last two I don't think we'll get to here, but it'll add an extra field to your profile to show you your messages, and it'll allow the ability for other modules to alter your notices. Um, but if you look at the module code later on, those last two items will be there also. Um, so let's look at the finished module just to see an idea of like what we're trying to make. Um, so basically, when we go to list people, there'll be a new tab. Let me just bump this up. There'll be a there'll be a new tab called role notices, and when we click that, there will be a uh, there'll be a text area for each role that we have, and as we add new roles, it'll show up there. We'll be able to. Um, you know, have notices for each different role. And then when you go and see the block, uh, so this person is an administrator and uh, also an authenticated user, so they see two messages. You're great and you're the greatest admin. So that's the basics of what we're gonna cover today. Um, in the module at, in the module source, you would actually be able to also have it in managed display, say like, you know, show your notices or whatever here. Um, and also there would be the ability, there's a, another module, sub-module that alters those notices before they go out to show you sort of how hooks work, because we still have hooks in Drupal 8. Um, okay, so I think that is pretty much the end of my slides. Go into slides mode for a moment, let's try it. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I have the module right now checked out at the simplest, not the simplest, okay. I have this little script. I'm gonna go to the Hello World example. It's gonna check out the module. It's gonna check out the module at the earliest stage and it's gonna clear cache. So I'm not gonna clear cache each time I do something new. I'll try to mention when you need to clear cache, but anytime you like have a new route or a new block, um, you're gonna need to clear cache. Um, so if we look at this, the first thing that we need to do is we need to have a dot info dot yaml file and uh, this is going to determine the machine name of your module um, so this is role underscore notices dot info dot yaml uh, so this is like the info files in Drupal 7 um, so very similar except we're using yaml format um, we have the name type module because it could be a theme or a profile description package 
Uh, we're going to show later how we can make this for Drupal 9 too, but um, right now we're, it's simply a Drupal 8 module. Um, and then just has one dependency on block because one of the main things it does is it displays a block, so there's no need in having a module if you don't have block enabled, though most people do. Um, so that gets it on the module page. I think I've enabled it, but I'm going to disable it just to be sure. So I'm just disabling the module so we can start from scratch. Okay, so it's successfully disabled. So we will go to extend and we will look in the search for role. We see our module here, I thought I disabled it. Jeez, I'm in the wrong tab. Okay, so it should be disabled on this one. And so if I look for role here, we have role notices, we have a description that we saw there, and then we have our dependency on block. So let's enable it. So the first thing that this first stage is going to do is it's sort of like, it doesn't really affect the other work with the other part of the module, but I just wanted to get something out on the page, a hello world. So how we do that is we need to create a route. So if you're familiar with Drupal 7, there was hook menu, which did a whole bunch of things. Um, that's been split up into a bunch of different areas. And so the, the ability of hook, hook menu to say, at this particular path, um, I want you to call this function has been moved to your .routing.yaml file. So again, it's my machine name for my module, role notices routing.yaml, and then um, in here we have individual routes, so this is a hello world route, has a machine name there, has a path, and then the controller basically says, what's gonna take over this? So I could technically just um, have this go to a global function, but that's usually not done in Drupal 8, you usually have a class um, and then a method on that class. Um, so basically it needs to be something it can call. So if we look at, and then we have a permission. So the permission here is saying, if you don't have this permission, you can't get to this route. Or you, you can go there, but you get access denied. Um, so if we go here, this is very similar to Drupal 7 in that I'm returning a render array. It's of the type markup. And, um, and then my markup is hello world that is translated with the T function. So I could use the global T function here, but usually, if you're in a class, you should not. You can use the string, string translation, and it's gonna uh, trait which will provide you with the T function, and then also like, I think, singular, plural, translation stuff. Um, so pretty similar to Drupal 8, so let's see what that looks like. If we go, how we would find it, if we didn't have a menu item, is we would just copy the path, go to the site, and hello world, live demo gods so far have been shining on me. Okay, so that's what we do. We can see that if we change it, it should change with it. So let's put a little emoji, save that. So we have our emoji here. So, um, so yeah, hello world, you know, this is the basics of getting something on a page. So the other thing that this first stage of the module does is it creates a menu item. So if we look at the role notices dot links dot menu, um, this again in Drupal 7 was part of hook menu, I think if I remember correctly. Um, so we're providing again a machine name. We, we use for our machine name usually the machine name of our module dot something else so that we don't clash with other modules. Uh, title description and then a route name, so basically it doesn't have to be our route, it just has to be a route that exists. Um, that's going to be re uh, where Drupal should make a link to that route. And then the parent uh, menu item. So if I search this, I would find this in another links.menu provided by the system module. Um, so how we see that menu is if we go to system reports, there should be a new item, role notices, hello world. Same page we just saw, just providing the menu item for there. Okay, so let's go to, let me look and see if that's all the files. And here, oh yeah, here's where we define our permission. Again, this was, I think, hook permissions in Drupal 7. Um, we have a machine name here, and then we have a human readable name. Um, if this was a, um, I forget what they call it, if it was like a security permission, then there would be another, section here, I forgot what the key is, but basically to say this, to only give this to 
trusted users. Um, we don't have to create our own permission. We could simply, uh, in our route, use access content or content access, whatever it is there, that's provided by the node module. Um, actually, it's provided by the system module now. Um, and, uh, but this is an example of, you know, we want to say, okay, only people who have our permission can see our form to set the notices. Okay, so let's go to step simple form. Let's go to a slightly more advanced form. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing about the, no, we haven't got to the form yet. Sorry, I'm gonna skip back to simple form. Yeah, okay, so now we're at the simple form state. So we have a new route up here that is uh, roll notices settings form. We have, a, we have a different path. And in this time, instead of pointing to an actual method on a class, uh, when we have con the underscore controller, we have to point to something, a method that's callable, it has to be a public function. Um, here, if we do underscore form, this has to point to a class that implements the form interface class. And as long as it implements the form interface class correctly, then Drupal will know what to do. Let's see how that works. And again, we're gonna use the same permission. So, um, this is our class that I pointed to, and then we have form base here. So form base uh, implements the form interface I was telling you about. So because it does that, I have to have a get, get form ID, and I just have to return a string there, it's unique to my form. And then what's actually gonna make the page, or make the form, is the um, build form. So in Drupal 7, I think this was like in hook menu, you would point to a form callback or something. Basically it was like a global method, a global function. Here, um, what we're actually returning is very similar to Drupal 7, um, in the sense that it is a form array, uh, so the form API documentation, so on the link inside the finish module is a link to more documentation on this. But basically, the simplified version is we're making one text area and we're having one submit button. And how we're gonna, let's see what that looks like. Roll notices. Um, so here, I have my test message here says it's saved, I can see that when I reload the form, it's still there. Um, so how it saves it in this case is because this module is meant to save the notices on production. So the idea is you don't want to have to move your notices from development via config onto your production server. You wanna be able to just set notices live. So we're using the Drupal state service. So this is basically, we'll save this on your local state. So it's not deployable. Um, and then I call, so this is how I get a service from Drupal, which we'll make our own in a little bit, so that'll have more information about how services work. Um, but the state service has uh, this method called, a public method called git, where I can get a, a state setting, and I'm saying the default should be empty string. So basically, if it hasn't been set, just return me an empty string. Um, let's see if this is. So one thing's nice, I'm using PHP Storm, is I can just say, okay, I can do control B here and it'll take me to the class that implements this service. Um, that's because I have a couple um, uh, plugins added, uh, the Symphony plugin, the Drupal Symphony Bridge plugin, and I think the Annotations plugin, and I always forget like where each one stops. But if you have the combination of those three, it's sort of aware of services and what class they attach to. Um, so I get, the, um, I get the value, in this case, if we never install the module before or we haven't set, set something before, then this would be a default value of just empty string. But as soon as we submit it once, so because we implemented the form interface, it knows to build it here, and it knows, Drupal knows when I submit it to call my public submit form method. Um, so here, when I submit, instead of like in Drupal 7, your submit callbacks, I think would both get two arrays. Um, we get an array for the form here, of the current form, but then the form state comes back in a form state interface object. 
So instead of like going through a nested array, I can just say, okay, the method is git val was it git value, and my value here is the same value as my key for my text area. So notice, um, so these two are the same, and so I have all for all of the elements that I would have in my form, I would have a corresponding um, value item in the form state. So in this case, it would be a string. In this case, I use the Drupal state service again. Ooh, I do it two different ways, actually. I forgot. So up here, I'm calling it in a way that says, I know there's a service called state. But um, on the Drupal class, there's a couple helper functions for like really commonly used services. And so the one of them is the state one, which basically, if I looked at it, just says, get me the state service. Um, so in this case, instead of calling git, this is the form submit, so I'm gonna call set. Again, I use the same key as I did up here. So when I get it, roll notice is dot test. When I set it, roll notice is dot test. And then I just set this notice here. And I send a message, and you'll notice here, I'm using the deprecated Drupal set message. So we'll see later on how I will remove that and it'll make it all Drupal 9 compatible. Um, all right, so let's go to a little more advanced form. So here, I wouldn't actually have to clear cache because I haven't changed anything that Drupal needs to cache as far as like definitions or anything. Uh, since my class hasn't changed, it would still call this method each time it made the form. So this is a little, this is more complicated. I'm not going into all of this right now, but basically what I'm doing is I'm getting the role names, I'm just calling this global function that Drupal provides. So this will have the role IDs and then the role, the role IDs as the keys and the role values will be the role names. And then I'm making a form element as a con, sort of like as a container here. Uh, basically I'm setting this pound tree, which means that everything below this that's nested in this array will come back as will come back as one array instead of me having to get like notice for authenticated users, notice for administrators. So I basically what I do is I go over each role and I make a text area. So instead of um, having one text area that I had before, all of these are nested with the role IDs. This is pretty much the same. Uh, the only difference here is that when I get the state here, I'm saying if it, nothing has been set, give me an empty array. So the idea being here that instead of storing a string now in that state, and I've changed, changed the key slightly, um, I'm gonna store an array um, because I want one notice for each string so I don't have to serialize it anything myself. Um, and the submit function is, I think, exactly the same except for the key for my, value, for my form state thing has changed because it's notices and the key for my state has changed from notice to notices. Um, so I'm just going to save that in the same way that I would, and then the message is the, message is the same. I've actually updated here, because I was doing it in stages I forgot, but we'll go back to it later to update to Drupal 9. Um, so let me show you how that works. So I reload this. I have, I think, I made a few role, I made one extra role, editor, so I have editor, administrator, and authenticated user. I've already filled out these values. I'm gonna change this one to say hi, admins. And for editors, I'm gonna say check your spelling, and I'm gonna spell it incorrectly. And I'll save this. And we can see that you know if I reload it, it saves this because it's saving it in the Drupal state and bringing it back each time. Okay, so for the next one, let's make a simple block. So the idea is there's no point in saving these notices unless I can display them somewhere. So we're gonna display them in a block so that the site builder can place the block wherever they want to. So blocks are provided in plugins in Drupal 8. So um, a lot of things that in Drupal 7 were like uh, hook something info. I think there was like hook block info where you'd say, okay, these are all the blocks that I provide. A lot of that in Drupal 8 has moved to plugins. So instead of having a hook where I say these are all the blocks that I provide, I make the plugin in the correct folder here. So if we look at this inside my SRC directory and all of my 
um, all of my source code should be in this SRC directory. I have a plugin folder, and then under that I have a block folder. And usually to learn this, I mean, you can look at the, um, the plugin manager for blocks, but usually the easiest way is just to look where um, other modules put their plugins for, like if you want a block plugin or field formatter plugin. Um, so I have a role notices block.php file, which corresponds to the same class. And in this one, uh, one thing that's important here is that I am, in this class, I have an annotation. So this is metadata in comments. Some people call it code in comments. It's really more metadata in comments. Um, so I use this at block to tell it this is a, this is a block annotation. I give it an ID, so role notices, and then an admin label. So this is the label that will show up on the block uh, layout page. Um, and I have a link here if you go to the source code to more about how this works. Um, after you get used to it, it's pretty easy oftentimes. If you use um, Drupal console, it'll generate this for you, but also if you just copy another block and then just fill in your own values there, it's usually pretty easy too. Um, this block is extending block base. Almost all blocks um, that you would make yourself, you would do this, you don't have to, but has a lot of helper functions in there for you and has implemented some stuff for you. Um, this is common for like field formatters or field types, they'll have a base class that you usually can just extend. Um, and the base class will, let me see if I, like it won't extend the things that I need, it won't give me the methods that I absolutely need to implement. So obviously the, the block base can't do the build for me because it doesn't know what should be rendered in my block, right, that's up to me. So if I, if I forgot to do the build one here, so I'm gonna change this to build X, PHP Storm is gonna say, hey, you haven't implemented the build function. Um, so the build function, technically, all I would need to do here is return a render array, so it's very similar to um, Drupal 7 as, as far as what it expects. Um, here, I, this is similar to what we did in the form in the sense that the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to try to make this text a little smaller. Oh, it's my, uh, yeah, okay. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the same Drupal state service and I'm gonna get the key that I saved in the form submit function. The same, basically this is straight exactly the way my form submit works. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to call um, a helper function that's gonna get me the current user. And after that I'm gonna get the roles. So this, sort of, this line here, basically what I'm doing is saying I know which roles I have, I know they correspond to certain role IDs, and I know my notices, I know their keys also correspond to role IDs, so I'm gonna intersect the two, and I only want the notices for the current user's role. So after I do that, um, again, I think this is very similar to Drupal 7, is that I have this pound theme function, and, or sorry, pound theme property in my render array, so this is basically saying, I don't wanna determine how the HTML is ultimately rendered. I wanna tell Drupal, this is a list. Render this however you render lists. And if I looked at the template file, it would say, okay, I need something called items, which is gonna be, in my case, gonna be strings. So I just pass in the notices that I got from the state, and then it just does a whole bunch of stuff, basically passes it ultimately on to the twig, func the twig file and renders the list. Um, so uh, in this one, uh, in this session, I'm not gonna really say how to make new ones, but you can also provide new, uh, I think it's hook theme, you can provide new templates. Um, so let's look and see what that looks like. I may have already placed the block. Let's go back to the home page and see. I have not placed the block, so we're gonna go to structure, block layout. And this block will just be like any other block. If I go to sidebar first, roll, my roll notices block. Again, so this is directly from the annotation. And the, and the category is from my module name, though I think I can override it in the annotation, but if I don't, it comes from my module name. Um, so this comes from the annotation. I place block. Um, I am going to just not do anything different. It's there, so if I go back to the site, then over here, I have my um, hello, these are my two messages because I'm an authenticated user and an admin. So basically, if I looked at the source, 
uh, the twig, um, the twig template would have just made an uh, unordered list with the two items here. All right, so it renders, so basically, um, so I'm basically only in charge of a couple things if I'm gonna make a block, the very minimum, is I gotta do block access because I don't, um, because I'm not using, I'm not allowing messages for the unauthenticated users, I, I could have done that, but I'm not. Only thing I'm doing in block access is checking to see if they are authenticated. Um, so what I do is I get the block access will send me an object of the type account interface, and on that there's a method called is authenticated, so that's gonna return a true or false. And then here, what block access is gonna return, and again, like the definition is actually in the interface itself or the documentation, it's going to return a, uh, it's gonna return an access result object. So this is basically saying, allow this if this is true, and this will be true if the u current user is currently authenticated. So if I was to look at this as an unauthenticated user, I would not see the block at all. If I logged out, I wouldn't see the block at all. Um, so that's the basics of the build. Let me see if there's anything new in this step. I have this little script that tells me what files changed. Okay, so only this file changed in my test. So there are tests if you wanna look at um, just for my sanity so I don't break the module as I change it, um, but I don't go into that here. Okay, so let's go back and we made the block. So we're gonna add, no, we're gonna, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to move a bunch of stuff into a service. So right now we have a few things going on, multiple places the same. Here we get the notices the same, in the form, we get the notices the same. And in the finished version of the module, um, we also get the notices when we make the user profile uh, field. So the idea here is I'm doing the same thing multiple times the same way, and my form, my block, and ultimately my field all have to know how to get these notices. And if I wanted to change that, it would be difficult. It's also would be super easy for me to accidentally change the, some letter in this key and get it wrong, and I wouldn't get an error, but it would basically say, well, I don't have any notices. So um, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a service to basically encapsulate the getting and setting of notices so that all of these classes have to do is load the service and say, get me notices or set notices. So that's the next step, which is five, simple notices manager. Okay, so let's look. So, uh, to make a service, basically all I need to do is, in this, um, I have a class, or uh, sorry, I have a YAM another YAML file called rollnotices.services.yaml, and in that file, I have this services top key, and it's basically, to define a service, the very minimum is just to say, I have a service, here's the machine name, and I have a class that is that service. And Drupal will take care of constructing that class for um, each time somebody asks for the, well, not each time, because it's one instance of this object, one instance of the class. Anytime ask, anybody asks for a service, it's the same one. So if I go to the notices manager, um, this is a class, I just put it at the top level Often, the, often modules put it just right directly under SRC. Um, let's see here. And this class, if you notice, it doesn't like extend anything. So there's nothing special about this class. It doesn't have to extend, you know, services space or whatever. So I have a few public functions on this, or public methods on this class. One is get user notices. One is get all notices. And one is set all notices. Um, and you'll see here, basically, the get all notices and set all notices are doing the exact same thing I was doing before when I was getting the notices, just get, using the state service, getting, and setting. Up at the top for the get user notices, I'm doing what I did in the block, where I said, give me the notices, and then determine what, you, what um, 
roles the user has, then intersect the two, um, so I only get notices for the user. So basically, I made this class, and to load it, or to use it, in the form, I just say, da, 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 da. instead of calling the state service, I call my own, I tell Drupal load my service here, and then I say get all notices, because in the form I want to display all of, I want to be able to edit all of them, not just the user, the current users. So in here, the form, that's the only line that's changed in the form, or two lines. And then down here, I do Drupal service, and I get my, the same service, and I say set all notices, sending at the form value. So basically, the form has changed very little, just instead of knowing directly that it's stored in state, it just says, hey, uh, notices manager, I want notices, and I have notices I want to save now. So it doesn't care how it saves. Like, so I could easily, if I wanted to change this module to say, hey, I'd really like to uh, save these notices as configuration. All I would have to do, um, as far as the form, is con form and the block is concerned, nothing would change, because it doesn't really, it doesn't know how the notices are, are stored at this point. So the block um, class, the only thing that's, that's the manager again. The block class, the only thing that has changed is instead of it having to know, um, uh, instead of it having to know how to, uh, basically, you know, it has to know, to, before it had to know to intersect the roles that the user had and the notice, the notices that existed to make the notices, it just says get user notices, so the service takes care of that. The other thing that's nice about that is later on in the module, when I provide the alter so that modules can alter which services, which notices appear, and there's a sub-module called role notices weight that says only get the notice with the role with the highest weight or lowest weight, I forget. But the idea here is that if when I get the notices and display them in new ways, like on the user profile, each place doesn't have to know to call that alter hook. Um, so I'm not gonna show you anything on the site because there's not there's no functionality from the user point of view that's actually changed at this point. Um, it's just sort of encapsulating the logic that I had before into a service. Alrighty, so we're on five, I'm going to load six. Um, so right now, actually, I'm going to not do that. I'm gonna go back to five because I wanna show you the problem that six is solving. So right now, uh, we haven't told anything to Drupal about when to change these notices. Like, so the block, uh, we haven't said, hey, when somebody updated, updates notices, make sure you re-render the block. So right now, let's look at the site, and I am going to, yeah, okay. So I have hello and hi admins, and I'm gonna open up another tab, and I'm going to, go to role notices and I'm gonna say, thanks for being a member. So I've changed the notice. Ooh, actually this is gonna update. <laughs> uh, it's gonna update now because I cleared cache when I changed the git files, but let's do it again. And add a bunch of exclamation points. And save it. And hopefully, yeah, so now it didn't update. So the first time, the only reason it up updated the first time is because I didn't show, it doesn't, you don't see this, but every time I go to a new stage, I clear cache. So that's why that, you don't want to have to obviously every time you save your notices to okay, remember to clear cache. Um, so here, it didn't actually bring in the new, um, it didn't bring in the new exclamation points because Drupal didn't know, like, didn't have any reason to re-render it. So let's, look at how that is done. Well, we have to go to the new stage, which is six. And so when we do that, basically the only thing that's changed here is that basically in my block, I add this pound cache. So I'm basically telling Drupal, hey, this is some information about when to invalidate this rendered output. So the first thing I do is put context user dot roles. Um, and this is a context, a cache context provided by Drupal core. That is the combination of the user roles. So basically, if this was the only thing I had, 
then it would cache it for anybody who has the same roles for me as me. So the idea is that if I get the new editor role, I want to see the editor messages. So it has to, Drupal has to know that, oh, when the combination of roles changes, make sure you re-render this so you get the new message this person might have. Conversely, if I take the editor role away, I should no longer see that message. Um, the other thing that I'm doing here is I am return, I want to also set a, an array of strings which are render tags, or sorry, cache tags. Um, and here I just have uh, an element in the array called tags. And here, again, I'm using my manager. So up here I call the service and set it to notice as manager. And what I'm doing is I'm calling, I made a new public function called get render tags. Because I don't want the block itself and ultimately the user field when I have it to have to figure out how to do that. So here I just basically, if I get a bunch of role IDs, I make strings that's role notice, colon, role ID, role notice, colon, role ID. So for, any, for all the notices that are displayed, that's what I would have here. So I am going to kind of, I'll, sh I'll show you that it works and then we'll go on to the next one because we have very little time. Okay, so I'm gonna save this. So it didn't, before it didn't update, now it should update. Yeah, so it updated there. Um, so, so basically, I think that's it for this stage, was just to add the cache tags. Where's my block? Um, and one thing, if you do test out this module, uh, user one has a different, doesn't actually use its combination of roles. Uh, it always has this is super one. So this, if you test this out, test it with not user one for this. The tag thing will work, but the way core does roles for user one is different. Um, but it will still, user one would still update if, with new notices. Um, okay, so I'm gonna skip dependency injection for right now, but if you wanna take a look at it, that step is in the one so we can see the Drupal 9 thing. Um, and the dependency injection step also has a lot of inline comments to explain what's going on. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go to step eight where I go back and I make sure that I'm using a deprecated function so I have something to upgrade. So one thing about this module is the last time I did this session was in 2015. And so I got this module out, dusted it off, and I ran the upgrader, and the only thing I had to change besides the info file was this right here, Drupal set message. Um, so the th two things I'm gonna have to change is the Drupal set message and uh, something in the info file, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, I have the updater module, update status, upgrade status module, and I'm not, basically I'm not gonna run it right now, I've already run it, and what it's telling me is, hey, Drupal set message needs to change, so it's basically telling me what I actually need to change it to, and it says if you want this to actually be compatible with Drupal 9, here's what you do. I am going to do that, switch to 9 compatible module, and I won't even show you this on this site. What I will do is I will copy this. No, I think I need to open up the find. So I have my finder for my Drupal 9 site here, open Drupal 9, and then I go to my module, and I do Drupal 9 Amsterdam. So I'm gonna go to modules. I have nothing in there, nothing up my sleeve. I'm gonna drag this onto here. So now I have role notices here on my Drupal 9 site. Uh, the thing that I, ha the other thing besides the Drupal set message that I had to update was, I hope I didn't take it out of this one. I hope it copied it. I, if I have a feeling it didn't, it didn't. Um, I can show you it on this one. So we're gonna skip to Adam, uh, yes, oh. okay, so I, besides the Drupal set message thing, I had to change this core version requirement to, this is a composer constraint that to the right of the uh, colon, so I can be more fine grained, but I'm basically saying any eight or nine that this should work on. And then if we look at the uh, form, Then down here, 
we have the, I get the messenger, uh, and then I add messages. And this is just from form base, gives me a little helper to get the message service. And let's go to Drupal 9. This is my Drupal 9 version. I'm going to go to extend. Hopefully I didn't already enable it. Roll. So roll notices. So it recognizes it. Be basically it recognizes it now because the info.yaml file. I enable it. And voila, I should, everything should work. So I'm out of time, but uh, I've already had this enabled on the site. That's why we have the one, two, three. Um, so basically, that's it. So it's not really like the big takeaway is Drupal, most, in most cases, Drupal, your Drupal 8 module is very, very close to being Drupal 9 compatible. Um, so I don't think, do I have time for questions? Anyways, I don't think I do, but feel free to come up and ask me questions. So thank you. <laughs>